eight minutes. So I'm going to make up for that today. Uh, no, I won't. I won't do that too. No, no problem. So the announcements for today. Monday morning Bible study resumes tomorrow. We're going to do it in person, but if you're still more comfortable um, being at home, being remote, we will try to set up a Zoom option for you. All are welcome. We have a core group, but everybody is welcome to join us for that. And even if you can't be there every week, if you're curious about the book of Revelation, which we all are, and would like to have more information about that, we're going to share some thoughts and ideas. So that's tomorrow at 9.30 at the church. Trustees tomorrow night, 6.30, outreach Tuesday evening at 6.30. Candy making, as we mentioned, begins in October, so that's just a couple of weeks away. Again, the Eastbrook Mission Barn trip, October 19th. If you don't know much about that, we've got some hearty souls that are involved in that. that every time they go, Pam and, and Kim and, uh, and others that are involved in that, so check with them if you're interested. The Bazaar is coming up more quickly than we might imagine, a little over a month. Always a great event, October 22nd. We are uh, also planning for this old-fashioned Christmas, and we don't even have a complete vision for it yet, but we're looking forward to that as well. See how that plays out. So, again, um, if you're because you're with us today, we'd like to mark your attendance if you have a pen, and uh, we'll collect those as well. Hopefully everybody got a bulletin and a song sheet since we're outside and don't have the hymnals here with us. Phyllis. At the end of the table where Daryl is, there's a basket okay. that we can put to attendance and uh, What's it called? Offering. offering? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> in the basket. Yes, even though we're outside, we still welcome the offering, but thank you. Yeah, that's great, great to mention that. So back by Daryl, we have a basket there so we can mark your attendance and the offering that you would care to give here today. So thank you, Phyllis, for that. Any other announcements? There's one I guess I forgot. There is uh, the youth group is meeting tonight at 6.30. So uh, JJ and Jen will be part of that. And um, we uh, welcome all in that age group that would like to come and be a part of that fellowship. That will be at the church tonight. Any other announcements that anyone has today? All right. Well, I would invite you to stand if you are able and join Tom as he reads or leads us in our responsive reading here this morning. Good morning. Our responsive reading comes from Psalm 37, 3 through 7. Trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Make your righteous rewards shine like the dawn. Be still before the Lord. And our opening hymn this morning is rejoice the Lord is King.
Now join in our prayer of affirmation and assurance. Lord in heaven, when we feel deserted, we take heart in the knowledge that you are always with us. Teach us to be still and wait patiently for your direction, so that we may continue to walk the straight and narrow pathway of righteousness that leads to your Father's eternal kingdom. This we pray in humble adoration. Amen. And you may be seated. Heavenly Father, you are the guiding light in our life. We would be lost in darkness without your illumination. May your beacon continue to shine brightly and guide us from this world into the next. In your sacred name we pray. Amen. And now, our prayer of illumination. Almighty God, we seek your wisdom, your counsel, and your guidance as we navigate the often difficult, perilous terrain in this world. Protect us and empower us as we commit to follow your word and obey your commandments. This we pray with great devotion, always and forever. Amen. Majestic Savior, your boundless grace and limitless mercy provide a lifeline for us. Even when our actions fall short of your glory, grant us clemency as we repent of our sins through our joint prayer of confession. Holy and living God, we acknowledge our transgressions with profound regret and deep sorrow. But we are lifted up by your promise of forgiveness and reconciliation. Hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can bolster our relationship with you and stand strong against future temptation. This we pray in solemn and sincere repentance in your holy name. Amen. Great and glorious God, your word is holy and precious. Open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and he, your sacred and impeccable instruction. This we pray with great anticipation. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Old Testament. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 15 through 20. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you in his love. He will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land. 
for they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. And our New Testament reading comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 14 through 22. This is a familiar passage. I'm sure many of you, most of you will recognize this. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go and in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing for their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Let us rejoice in God's holy word. His word brings us light, hope, and joy. but it's in your insert, near to the heart of God.
Amen. You may be seated. Well, Joyce, if you want to start the timer, so we'll see if I can get past eight minutes today. Are you done yet? Uh, 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 Joyce has a sense of humor. Now. So there's this widely held belief that if you want to sound smart, you should quote Shakespeare. Now, you've got to be careful because Shakespeare was widely regarded as a brilliant man, uh, an epic writer. So you better be sure when you quote him that you're doing it in the proper context. So, as someone who is not considered especially bright, I'm going to give it a shot to see if it works, okay? So you guys can be the test here right now. If I were to say to you, to be or not to be, do I sound any smarter? All right, let me try another one here. What's done cannot be undone. Doesn't look like I'm getting a lot of positive feedback here. Let me do this. I need a visual, a Shakespearean hat. Maybe I'll sound a little bit more credible here. No legacy is so rich as honesty. With that, to thine own self be true. And parting is such sweet sorrow. What do you think? Am I any smarter? A little bit, maybe? Maybe not. I have one more. It ain't over till it's over. Oh, wait, that's, that's Yogi Berra. Sorry. There is another Shakespearean saying that I think fits well into our message for today and into our Christian walk, and that is, fare thee well. I'm not exactly sure which Shakespearean play that is from. Some of you Shakespearean scholars may know that. But it fits, I think, in a lot of ways in our Christian walk because we often find ourselves saying just that. Not in so many words because the Shakespearean way of speaking is quite different from the way we speak today. In fact, in the Bible it says, go, I wish you well. But then that's it. We don't really do anything else to reach out and to help and to aid people. Present company excluded, of course. This is a very active, giving, and generous group congregation. But nonetheless, many of us who claim to be Christians kind of forget the second part of that. We're good about saying, fare thee well, or go, I wish you well. But then we're kind of on to the next thing on to what we do next, and not really too concerned about the person that we leave behind. We fall into that trap, and it is addressed very quickly in the book of James, which we just read. What good is it if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith <coughs> save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food, and we say to them, go in peace. Sounds good, right? Keep warm and well fed, but do nothing for their physical needs. What have we done? How have we honored our faith and our discipleship by allowing them to go on without any aid or any assistance? It is pretty clear from Scripture that faith by itself not accompanied by deeds, is dead. So we ask ourselves that question on this beautiful Sunday morning. What is the state, what is the pulse of our faith? How good are we with our words, but not quite always backing them up with actions? How good are we at saying, go, I wish you well. Live in peace, be well fed and clothed, but do nothing to help someone in need. The question, though, becomes how far do we go with one's service? Because we can get ourselves in a little bit of a difficult situation. This past week, this past Thursday, I delivered a meal to a woman who is homebound in her late 80s. And uh, I do this every Thursday, or every Thursday I can, for meals together. She is certainly in need, and I'm happy to do it. So 
on this particular Thursday, and this is not unusual, but on this particular Thursday, she said, hey, I'm, I'm out of napkins. Can't have a good meal without a napkin, right? I said, no problem. I'll, I'll get some napkins for you. So I ran to Dollar General and I bought a dollar package of napkins that for some reason cost $2.49. I haven't figured that out yet, but that's the way it goes. Shame on me. Brought the, uh, brought the napkins back and I thought that was the end of my service. But she reached behind her, her chair, and she had a bag of dirty clothes and asked if I would take and wash them. Wasn't real comfortable with that, to be honest. Although I had done it before without my wife's knowledge, and hopefully she won't wash later this afternoon. Although I think I did eventually confess that to her that I did it. So how far do we go in our service to others? How far do we go with our faith? Because we can be taken advantage of. We can be tramped on from time to time if we're not careful. How far do we go? We pray for the wisdom. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to meet you here. I'm going to answer your call. But how far do I go with this? I'm just not real comfortable. Because some people, let's face it, when they ask once, they'll ask again and again and again and again. We've all been there, right? Good-hearted souls that want to serve. But how much can we do? So I was troubled as I left her, and I told her the truth. I told her that I could not do the close because I was headed to Columbus, which was the truth. I had a course of study there yesterday and on Friday. So I kind of got myself out of, out of it. But as I left, I took note of the expression on her face. And it was one of a mixture, I guess, of fear panic, uncertainty, because she said, these are the only clean clothes. I don't have any more clean clothes to wear. So I left her home greatly troubled. What, what did I just do? Did I really live my faith? Could, could I have done more? I, I guess I could have. I could have tried to work it out, although I was in a pretty tight, on a pretty tight schedule that day. Did I do the right thing, Lord? Did I do the wrong thing? How do we respond to this? Well, what we do know from the passage from the Old Testament of all places that Tom read for us, that even when we may fall short of our efforts or in our efforts to help reach out to others, the Lord is always there to pick up the slack. And so as we read, or I should say as Tom read earlier, we know that he is there with us. He will always be with us. He will always guide us. He will always help us find a way. Now, it doesn't always happen right away. There are periods of suffering, periods of uncertainty, just like this particular woman went through the other day. But he will always be with us. He will always be faithful. He will always be there to take the burden that we have. But we are clearly advocates of him and for him. So the call for each and every one of us is to look at the opportunities. Sometimes they stare us right in the face, right? What can we do to help our neighbor? How can we show the Lord that we love our neighbor? How can we demonstrate our faith? Not that we're here to demonstrate, but how can we show that we are a people of faith? Well, it's obviously by our deeds, and by our actions. But it's also the knowledge that the Lord is always there with us. I'll bet all of us, at one time or another, have felt a little bit deserted. Like, Lord, uh, I'm kind of at the end of my rope here. Where are you? I'm calling out. I don't hear you. I don't feel you. I don't see you. Where are you? This is part of the mystery of faith, though. The assurance through Scripture that He is with us, that He will guide us, that He will be with us. With us, He will give us strength. He'll give us the wisdom to decide how much is enough, how much is too much, and the knowledge that He will continue to be with us every step of the way. That is the essence of our faith: to walk with Him each and every day. And as we do so, 
as we look out for those who are struggling, those who are on the margins, that we not look past the downcast and the disheartened, that we not turn a blind eye to those who hunger and thirst, to those who come to the church door looking for assistance and for money. And is it the fact that they came on their own or were perhaps they directed by the Lord? Because someone there, someone in that church would respond to their need. To not mock or ridicule those who don't have the same mental capacities that maybe we do. To not condemn those who have made mistakes, even repeatedly, to put them out on the street without shelter and without adequate clothing. Because it's easy for us to point and say, you put yourself there. You deserve it. I'm not helping you. You need to help yourself. And there's some truth to that. But would we ever expect that response from the Lord to us to say, you know, John, I've, I've been with you and I've tried to help you. You need to help yourself. I'm out. That's something he never says to us. He is always with us. Fare thee well may have fit nicely into a Shakespearean play, but it has no role in our lives as disciples of Christ. Let us be aware and respond to the needs of others just as the God we serve does for us. Or as Shakespeare himself might say, he or she, who is kind and generous, who taketh the time to reach out and lift up and care for one another, shall be anointed as a true disciple and rewarded for completing thy circle of faith through both words and through works. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we've been through this before. We have learned to look past and even ignore the least among us. But you caution us that if we have true faith, it must be affirmed by our good works, that we lift up others and bring honor and glory to your name. On this day, when we worship together in the beauty of your creation, so close to the beautiful pasture and the still waters, let us be ever mindful of the importance of closing the circle of words and deeds, so that our faith may indeed be more complete. In your sacred name we pray. Amen. Prayer is indeed the link that we have to the Lord our God, to our faith, and to one another, really. I can't tell you how many times people have said, I appreciate your prayers. And I think, I pray enough. Did I do enough? <clears throat> Was I fervent enough in my prayer for you or for your loved one? I need to re-examine that. But today as we come together as a fellowship of believers in this beautiful setting, one in which I, I can't imagine any place on earth at this moment being more peaceful, we reflect on our lives and on the lives of others and how we might lift them up and how we might ask to be lifted up on this particular day. So, if anyone has any praises or prayers that they would like to share, we welcome you to do so at this time. Yes, thank you. My son and his wife, Michelle, got home at 3.38 this morning. <laughs> they had no problems on the road. And they went down, they went to different places to visit. They sent me fun pictures. And I just want to thank my church family for their prayers. Well stated, and thank you for making that point once again, that we are indeed grateful when we know that others have prayed for our prayer concern, and having Judge and send and wife back safely is, is certainly a blessing, so we're thankful for that. Thank you. Yes, Sandy. I just want to thank you all for prayers for drawing. Um, we're right at this point, we're waiting for the first Okay, 
Thank you, Sandy. Sandy, thankful for, for prayers for John. And I didn't bump either of these two young ladies to, to bring that up but, uh, on cue. And we are. We are thankful for prayer. We're thankful for John, and we continue to pray. And, you know, all the things you pray for, you don't necessarily pray for insurance companies. But I do think, I do think that a reexamination of the procedures that they go through and oftentimes procedures that are absolutely necessary and, and, and why for some reason they deny it, I, I don't know. So let us pray for that as well. Did I see your hand, Bob? Yeah, praise the Lord for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are indeed thankful. This is great, a great place of fellowship. Steve? This is more of a, again, a thank you prayer, rather than prayer, uh, concern or praise, but just thankful for being here. Rick and Julie, thank you. This is outstanding. This is what, what a great atmosphere and setting. But more than that, thankful to be part of Oak Chapel and thankful for such a great pastor and outstanding message every week. And I listen to for Pastor Ken. I'm wondering what more can I do? But I'm, am I doing enough to get people to attend this service? I want to just invite everyone I know because it's such a good setting, such a great atmosphere, and such a good message every week, every week even when we're inside. But it's so thankful for being part of Oak Chapel, and I want to do more. I want to do more and get more people here. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate that very much, yeah. And it's hard to ask people who do so much already to do more, but I'm glad that uh, we are motivated to continue to serve and uh, thankful for that spirit of involvement and helping one another. So, Steve, thanks so much for your kind words there. Oh, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. Um, I, you guys have all been saying thanks for all the prayers, and, and someone who is very conscious of saying thank you for the prayers is not here today, and may or may not have caught on Sandy's not here. Um, she's got a runny nose, you know, stuffy nose, coughing, the dog bolted again, knocked her down, oh. her ribs are sore, um, she's having kidney spell, she's anemic, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So just prayers for her well-being mm -hmm. and that she actually takes the time to heal herself and doesn't keep trying to be her. <laughs> we love that she's always there for all of us, mm -hmm. but um, prayers for her health and her safety. Yeah, thank you, Jen, for raising that. Uh, Jen is more aware than I am, but I, in my conversation with Sandy, her back pain is pretty intense, and she comes every week and, uh, you know, not able to be here today, but... Uh, comes and plays and comes on Saturday to, to practice. So it is really inspiring and uh, and really uplifting. And we want to definitely be in prayer. If you get, have some time today, tonight, tomorrow, to just take 30 seconds and lift up Sandy, that would be that would be terrific. Thank you for that. Yes, Donna. Uh, praise for Pat Shofter. She has her 90th birthday. Pat Shofter, former member of this church, right? Yes. Yeah. Are they in Florida? Okay. So Pat celebrating her 90th birthday, and we celebrate that. Joyce? Um, this day, I'm going to have a revision of my name. Oh. We will be in prayer for you. Is that outpatient or? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So let's lift up Joyce. Uh, Again, if you're thinking about it on Tuesday, but any day for that matter, we'll put Joyce as she has a uh, procedure on her knee. Then again. Other phrases or prayer concerns? Again, I want to thank our men for their great work today. And I mentioned Jen and all that she does and uh, all the help that she provides, Mary, and all of you, really. Um, the church doesn't function unless all are involved, and uh, I'm just so grateful for everybody. And as Coach said, 
let's expand. Let's let's invite others into what we have here, our ministry, to help them and to help others as well. So, anything else that anybody has tonight? All right. Well, let us pause now for a moment of silent reflection. And as we do so, let us reflect on God's many blessings while asking him to hear our prayer and ease our burdens. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we listen to the quiet, take note of the serenity. We give you thanks for life on this day. Too much of our time is spent looking ahead, and clearly we, we need to do that. We need to prepare, but let's just take this moment to reflect on where we are right now. Peace and serenity, your presence, the presence of fellow disciples in this beautiful setting. We are so grateful. We take this opportunity to lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer, asking that you heal their wounds and ease their pain. Likewise, we come before you Praising your name, giving you thanks for your answer to prayer. As we gather today, we give thanks for mm -hmm. Becky's son and wife as they have made it safely back. Becky prayed and asked for prayers, and those prayers have been answered. We are so very grateful for that. We lift up John this morning and continue to pray for him, for health and healing, comfort and peace. Lord God, we ask you to be with him and to be with Sandy at this time. Lord, we praise your holy name. Even if today's service had been in a torrential downpour, we would have celebrated our faith and our love for you. But you blessed us with this beautiful day. May the fellowship of today enlighten and inspire all of us to continued acts of service in our faith. We're thankful, Lord, for this congregation, for this setting, for the members of this church, we are all evangelists. So in the weeks and months ahead, let us all reach out and invite others. We have an event planned later next month, the homecoming. We pray that others will come back and spend time and reacquaint with us. Lord, we lift up Sandy this morning. We pray for her well-being. We pray for healing. We pray that her pain will be eased. She is a true, faithful, quiet, humble disciple. We love her as you love her. She's been through a lot in this year. We ask you to bless her, bring her peace and comfort and healing. Today we lift up Pat Opter, celebrating her 90th birthday, a one-time member of this congregation, once a member, always a member. And so we lift her up today and give thanks for her life and her role in this church. And Lord, we lift up Joyce today as she undergoes a procedure for her knee. We ask, Lord, that there be complete healing, a removal of pain, as we pray in earnest in your holy name. Lord God, as we look around, take stock of our lives and the challenges that we have, and then we also take note of the challenges that others face, and we lift them up as well. Help us to reignite our faith, to be alive in you as you are alive in us. And as we celebrate this faith, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As God has graciously given to us, let us also give generously to the church so that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. As was mentioned, the basket is back at the far end of the pavilion. If not already done so, and you'd like to place your offering there, we welcome you to do so. 
Many of you do so in other ways, online or through the mail. We are indeed grateful for your offerings because the church cannot function, the church cannot carry out the will of Jesus Christ without this support. So as we come together today, we lift up these offerings and pray that they will be used in accordance with God's will and glory, now and forever. Amen. God, we humbly present these offerings for you given as a symbol of our faith in and love for you. May they be used according to your will, so that the promise of your love, grace, mercy, and compassion will spread to the ends of the earth, touching all people. This we pray with great joy and gratitude. Amen. The final hymn this morning, also in your insert, is How Firm a Foundation. As we continue in fellowship in this sacred space in nature, we ask you, Lord, to sharpen our senses so that we can be attentive to those in need, overlooking no one, and reaching out to everyone who experiences pain, suffering, loneliness, and any other type of challenge. Help us to help them as you have directed. And as we prepare to partake of this wonderful meal, we give you thanks for the hands who have prepared it. And thanks to you, O oh God, for your rich and generous bounty. In this we pray, in obedience to your great and powerful name. Amen. Let's eat. 